Hey everyone, my name is Sean Cecil from the Oculus Institute. And today I'm gonna to teach you how to process emotions. People often talk about processing emotions and there's this assumption that everybody knows how to do it. But my experience has been that actually very few people know how to process emotions at all. Because there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of bad advice and, and there's a lot of people going to extremes, right? So on one hand, people will say, hey, listen, don't sit there and wallow in an unpleasant emotion. And that's true. And then many people take that advice and they just pretend to be fully positive and they, they don't allow themselves to feel the emotion and they just repress it, right? And then they go into what, what people are calling toxic positivity nowadays. Oh, no, 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 yeah, yeah, everything, you know, this horrible thing happened, but everything's good, all, it all happened for a reason, don't worry about it, right? You know, kind of, kind of like when there's clearly like, you know, fractures underneath. The other thing that some people recommend is they say, hey, listen, you just feel your emotions in their entirety, which in and of itself is good advice, but then people will do that and they'll still be, you know, uh, what I'll call indulging in that emotion for years, right? And normally that's because they're uh, releasing it externally, but they're not really feeling it internally. Um, so these are some of the examples of the extremes that people go to. Uh, it turns out there's a very simple process for processing emotions. It's not, it's not necessarily easy if they're really painful, but it's very simple to describe because there's an order that you do this in. So the first order is that you, you know, you get present with it, right? The first order is that you, you know, fully feel it in its entirety, not broadcast it to the world because that's normally a deflection, right? But allow yourself to fully feel it, right? Which many people don't want to do, right? They try to find a way to, to not go in and actually feel it. You know, they try to distract themselves with everything from, alcohol to TV to whatever, 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 right? But if you don't do that first step, nothing else works. So that's presence. The second step is what I'm gonna call vigilance. Vigilance is where you, you look at it and you understand it. You understand where it came from. You understand why it's there. You understand how the different triggers work. You understand all the different series of things in your mind and the beliefs that it's connected to and all these other things. And you start looking and saying, hey, listen, what of this should I probably change? What if this is not serving me, right? And you build that understanding so that you can start unwiring some of the stuff that, that generated it in the first place, right? Because you, the last step is release, right? And now if you haven't felt it in its entirety, then let's just say for the sake of analogy, it's too heavy for you to release. Right, you have to feel it for it to, to to shrink down, and then if you haven't done the vigilance part and looked at all the stuff around it and connected to it, then it's still tied down, so it's not going to release. But if you fully felt it, and you disconnected the stuff that's related to it, right, then now you can make the choice to release it, and it is a choice at that point to release it, right. So the way that you process your emotions again is you fully feel it in its entirety. We'll call that presence right? You understand it in its entirety and all the stuff it's connected to, which we're going to call vigilance, and then you release it, right? Again, it, it, it sounds simple. It requires a lot of courage in order to do the presence part, and it requires a fair bit of practice and understanding to do the vigilance part. Like most people aren't used to looking inside themselves and studying how their mind works, um, but I, a highly, highly valuable skill to learn. Um, one good way to do it is to, to journal, but to journal from the perspective of what's going on inside your head and inside your heart, not what's going on outside around you, right? Uh, that's really powerful practice. And then you release it. And if you do that with all of your unpleasant emotions, you're gonna find that you're a lot happier. You're gonna find that you focus better. You're gonna find that your memory's better. You're gonna find that you have more energy and ultimately that you're, you know, you're getting more out of life and you're enjoying life a whole lot more. Hey everyone, I hope you enjoyed this video. If there's something that resonated with you, maybe a new connection that you made or, or some information that shifted your perspective, if you found value here, then I wanna give you one last gift. So I've put together a free diagnostic that I call a checkup with the career doctor. Short list of questions, and as you answer them, it's gonna give you a readout of where you stand on the important metrics of career fulfillment, right? How happy are you with your job and how good a fit is it, right? Financial success, which we all know, and then internal alignment, which is your level of inner peace and the inner resources that you have to bring to creating the life that you want. Additionally, it's also gonna show you which areas you can improve on to, to get those metrics moving in the right direction, as well as how can we at the Oculus Institute help you make progress. So it's totally free, 100%. All you have to do is just go to www 
www.oculusinstitute.com slash purpose quiz, right? Um, no spaces, no dashes, just oculusinstitute.com. That's O-C-U-L-U-S-I-N-S-T-I-T-U-T-E.com slash purpose quiz. Um, and you can take it totally for free. Uh, you'll get a free report sent to you. And then at the end, it will give you some next steps of what you can do to reach out so that we can help you create the career of your